All right, everybody, welcome back. This is Jeff for more tutorial videos. Um, I actually managed to get two games in since I made those last videos. The eight-player game that I made those for, which, oh my goodness, a heck of a time. The expansion is worth it alone just to play eight players. That was the biggest game I've ever played, and it was amazing. Seven and a half hours. Uh, and I actually managed to play a three-player game as well. Also great, actually. It was a great size with all the expansion stuff. Uh, we used the pre-made map, it was excellent. I might even do a post-game on that at some point, if people are curious. Um, yeah, but today, what are we going to do? Well, I'm originally just going to do action cards. Now, we did that round one playthrough, and I'll eventually do a round, a, a part two of that, like a, a second part of the playthrough. Um, but for now, I'm going to use that scenario, and I'm going to do action cards, uh, but also secret objectives. I didn't do that because it was just another thing I had yet to explain. And secret objectives start in the game, but they're one of those kind of strategy, they're that line between like strategy and game fundamentals. Um, but I'll draw strategy cards for all these factions first, show you how we do that. And then we'll do what action cards they all drew that round one and what they mean, and then go through some like basic, simple, normal action cards uh, in addition. Apologies for that fresh truck. A little bit loud, here we go, that's better. Okay. So let's do secrets. So I only drew one to show you guys what hypothetically someone could get. We had this one, and now to remind you, every game has level one objectives and level two objectives, right? Um, and this game started with all five exposed. By the way, the last two games, we did three exposed and four exposed. Uh, you never get to the end, but more level twos out really made the game snappier and more competitive. Uh, and it forces pressure. I think we even had, no, it wasn't that one. We had, um, six of the same type of planet which is the uh, little to the on the planet name there's little symbols next to it it had six of the same and then i think it was 11 planets and it was great it was in the three player game it was a good time um, but anyway so secrets you're supposed to draw right at the beginning of the game and you draw two and pick one um, so let's do that for the factions who didn't do it yet and then i'll give you some idea of what these do um, and Hakan only got one, so let's give Hakan a second one. I think they're going to keep that one. But just to give you some idea, uh, this game has lots of secret data. And I think the theme of this video is secrets. So nobody except for you, you knows your secret objectives. And nobody except, except for you knows your action cards. You're supposed to play them face down. So let's go through the secrets these people drew. Okay, if you remember, we had bug guys. Hi. We had the turtles. Hello. We had the um, former rulers of the universe who are now space cyber zombies. Hi. <laughs> and we had the trading lions. Okay, so let's see what we drew. So for this guy, we drew two. We got Fuel the War Machine. Have three space docks on the game board. And if you see there where it says status phase, um, it tells you when you score. So that's the standard scoring window. Uh, this one's also status phase. Be neighbors with all other players. Hmm. So this game only has four players. Um, we are neighbors with nobody right now. Now, because I use the pre-made map, it has good wormhole placement, if you notice. Um, so by going here, let's see, here and here, I'll almost be neighbors with everybody. So I think this guy can probably score foster cohesion better. So I'll keep that. We'll put this one back. Now, you're supposed to when it matters, put them back and reshuffle. But in early game, I don't think it actually matters that much. Okay, what did the turtles get? Turtles got control three or more... No, have three or more mech ships in the mech Rex system. Now, it's a little late to pick. This is why you don't pick round two, by the way. They're about to get mech Rex, probably. See, they have ships here, ships here. They're uh, not, a, not unlikely. What's the other one? Use space cannon to destroy the last of a player ship in the system. And this one, by the way, our first action phase... This one might be pretty good. Now, why would I pick it with them? People generally play x to get their orbital guns. But if you look at the top left, look at their flagship. I can barely say the name of that dang thing. The Karnasudu. Um, you may use this using space cannons to shoot adjacents. Five on a three. So even if you never built a space cannon, your flagship is a giant space cannon. Um, I think that's pretty likely, actually. Three or more ships in Mechatol. That's pretty easy, too. Hmm. And actions are cool because you can score them immediately. Uh, but let's risk it. Let's try it. I think this one's actually easier. But I, for the sake of keeping an action, I'm going to drop it. Does that reshuffle? Oh, it auto-shuffles. That's really nice. 
Okay, let's see what our mind net guys got. All right, flip flip. They got control a planet in a system that contains a planet controlled by another player. Stake your claim. So this one you have to invade a planet. Like, uh, say here. Take one. Don't get pushed out of it till the end of the turn. Possible, but not easy. Um, have five dreadnoughts on the game board. Oh, obviously. So this one is perfect for our faction. If you remember here, our unlock for a hero is four dreadnoughts. So we're already going to... And we're a dreadnought faction. Look at our sheet. Uh, see how it says under... Super, we have a dreadnought. It says super dreadnought. and has our faction symbol. And then in addition, it says a Lizix Dreadnought. Um, so we're, we want all our Dreadnoughts. So that's by far the better of the two. So we'll keep that. And again, this is normally private. But in this game, who cares? All right. And Hakan, if you remember our last video, they actually drew... Uh, have ships in Alpha and Beta wormholes. Now if you look, Alpha, Beta. Not that unlikely, actually. Um, but what's the other one? Have units with a combined production of at least eight in a single system. Actually, that's pretty likely. Look at our home system. Right now, we have two, three, four, five, six. If we build a space dock here, at seven, eight, nine. So if we build an extra space dock in our home, we'd have eight production. That's really easy. Let's keep that one. We'll get rid of this one. So secrets, nobody else knows, and they're just ways to get more points. If you remember our last time, Hakan's the only one that managed to score. So that's not bad. Now let's look at the action cards. So now Hakan has three because they were politics last time, to remind you. Politics is draw two action cards. So they drew two action cards and became the speaker. So what'd they get? Well, they got some good ones, by the way. First one, focus research. So what does this mean? So these cards always tell you when you play them, um, and what they do. And the, by the way, the description and the name actually help explain it. So I'd always recommend reading it. So actions are so, in some ways the best because they're a whole move in the tactical phase. Um, so let's look what they got. So the first one, focus research, spend four trade goods and research one tech. This means you can research tech outside the normal chain of play. And if you remember, these guys are the trade super faction. Well, I think they have one too many commodities. No, that's six. So for them, they just got to trade with somebody this turn. Anybody. And if they manage to trade, they get four trade goods. And once they get four trade goods, they can get a tech outside of normal teching windows. That's excellent. Um, next one. Uh, remove one of your command tokens from the game board and return to your reinforcements. Oh my goodness. This is one of the best cards, too. This is a free warfare. Uh, what does that mean? Well, so remember how you activate stuff? Uh, so we'll get one of the tokens that's not already assigned. So say I activate here. All the ships attack. Almost always, I have to wait till the next turn to take the shit off or have warfare. This card is warfare, the best part of warfare in a card. So one, and I think there's only one in the deck. I should check. Let's see, unexpected. It might be the only one. Let's see. Yep, there's only one unexpected action out of 120 cards. Very rare and very great. This is a great card. Now there is a relic now. Where is this? It's called the Codex, I think. Yeah, here we go. And the Codex lets you get three used action cards again. It's great, but you have no guarantee to get it. So there's pretty much only one chance to get this, and Hagan got around one. Freaking excellent. So basically, you'd take the token, put it back in your play area, and that fleet could do two actions. I wouldn't probably use this early game. Um, however, there's ways to get your action cards all taken away. So there's an incentive to use them. Plus, Hakan can trade for action cards. And I would say, if it scored you a point, uh, it'd be worth using. How could it score you a point? For example, this turn, say I did not get Warfare, that card would allow me to invade here with both these fleets, pull the token, and tame me attack Mechatol Rex. That would be pretty good. And then taking Mechatol Rex is one victory point. That might be worth it. That'd be a pretty good strategy. And the third one... Cripple defenses. Choose one planet, destroy each PDS on that planet. PDS, by the way, are these orbital guns. High little orbital guns. And if you remember, they, they defend you from bombardment, and they shoot freaking space cannons at you. Really annoying. So that's a great card if you were going to invade somewhere. Say, like Mechatol Rex in the middle of the map. So, overall, excellent cards. So remember, these are secrets. All my opponents know is I have three of them. Um, let's see what this guy got. The bugs got... Experimental Battle Station. This one's pretty good, too. Now, this is finally we get a card that has an action window. See the bold text? 
Um, it says, after another player moves ships into a system during a tactical action. So anywhere. It doesn't have to be attacking you. But one of yours, choose one of your space docks that's adjacent or in the system. That space dock now has space cannon. Remember we talked about orbital guns or these guys' um, flagship? Suddenly now one of your docks, one of these babies, can start shooting orbital cannons. That is great. It's once a game, but whew, surprise, orbital cannons is amazing. And finally, what they get? Morale boost. Oh, this is a good, another good action one. So, uh, at the start of round of combat, add plus one to result of each of your unit's combat rolls. Great. So, generally speaking, very nice cards. And so, some some activate like that in the um, fighting. These are both like you know tactical actions. Some are general actions, like we saw over here, that are like their full component actions that you have to do in your turn. Let's see, what we got over here. Direct hit. Oh, this is great. There's four of these in the deck. These can make sustained damage ships bad. To remind you, if you watch my unit video, sustained damage, look at the Dreadnought or the flagship. It basically means the ship can take two hits, which is really valuable. Um, but direct hit, if you use that, I destroy your ship. <laughs> now, is there any way around this? Sure. I'll show you Super Dreadnought, but it's the same for all Dreadnought 2s. Um, once you upgrade Dreadnoughts, they, you can't use direct hit on them. So the, normally why you upgrade your Dreadnought is you direct hit doesn't work anymore, so you can use it more reliably, and your move too. That's normally why you upgrade. Um, so direct hit is great, and especially they're a battleship faction. They like to have one. Uh, what's route? Oh yeah, at the start of the announce retreat step of space combat, if you are the defender, your opponent must renounce the retreat available. Somebody attacks you, you can force them to retreat after a round of combat. You just got to survive one round and you win. Actually, no, even if they, because they retreat, they lose automatically. So even if you die, they, lo they lose. So one ship could win. That is a great card. It's a new card, too, if you look at the top right. So, okay, these are all great cards, and all game you'll draw one or two. And these guys have the tech, Neural Motivator, that lets you draw two. So they'll always have a lot. Now, Hakan will also always have a lot. Look at uh, Arbiters, I think it is. Yeah, their third ability. I'll, I'll zoom in here to see it. See right here? When you are negotiating a transaction, action cards can be exchanged as part of the transaction. Hakan is the only faction that can trade with everybody and trade action cards. They also, their mech, where's that? Their mech lets them trade planets. <laughs> so they do trade everything. So these are great action cards. So direct hit is one of the more annoying ones. Uh, is there any other noble action cards I'd like to show you? Let me grab this deck. We'll put it back after we're done, though. There's a lot of new ones. Let's see. Okay, so the kind we didn't talk about yet, um, there are strategy phase. So when you pick those strategy cards, there's strategy page ones. For example, this one, when someone chooses a strategy card during the strategy phase, they must pick another card. Oh my goodness. So if somebody's about to win the game on an Imperial pick, you can just play this on them and they can't do it. Um, that's pretty good. Let's see if I can find another one. Skill Retreat's a famous one. There's a couple of these, I think. It even tells us two. How many, uh, yeah, let's see how many direct hits and skilled retreats there are. Now I gotta look. Ah! Oh, I did reset. No. Skilled. There's four skilled retreats. Some of the better cards are actually, or some of the more common cards, there'll be four of them. So skilled retreat, I think direct hit has four. Yep, there's three more. Uh, flank. Flank speed's a famous one. Great. So some are like skill retreat. This one basically when somebody attacks you, they don't win and your ships automatically leave. So you can just get out of battle and your fleet lives. That can be really good. Uh, flank speed, plus one to move to all your ships in a single activation. This means you can go way faster. It's a great freaking ability. Um, what are other fun ones? No, agenda phase is a whole bunch. Agenda phase, I'll do another video later. It's the political phase. Um, so this one, for example, diplomatic pressure. When an agenda is revealed, choose another player. That player must give you one of their promissory notes. Somebody just played this on me last game. So they force you to give them one of your binding deals. Again, we haven't talked about promissory notes much either. Um, I'll talk about that more for a further video uh, as well. Let's see if there's any other good agenda ones. I just randomly can draw. There's another direct hit. Hi. Waylay. Uh, nope. Let's see. I'm looking for agendas. Oh, this one's great. Look at this. Um, after another player discards an action card that has a component action. A component action, by the way, is just one of these. Where it literally just says action. 
take that action card from the discard pile. So for example, this card, Unexpected Action, one of the best cards in the game, when the Hakan uses it, you could steal it. So they added a lot of that with the expansion, where suddenly you can use an action card again. Let's see, can we get another? Ah, uh, there's ones like this. This one's, I think there's three of these, four of these two. Um, before you sign hits your ships in combat, cancel two hits. So suddenly, shields holding. Yeah, there is a bunch of these. So shields holding, there's four of those two. It's good to kind of know the common cards. Cancels up to two hits. It's freaking great, right? So you're in combat, you fight, you hit twice, they hit twice, but your ships don't get hit. Makes a big deal. Uh, let's see. Other ones. Coup de I don't really care about that one right now. War Machine. Nah, who cares? Um, free Infantry. That's cool. Unstable Planet. Uh, this one's cool because you can make somebody not spend a planet and you nuke Infantry on it. Uh, that's not bad. So they can do almost everything. Let's see what else is here. Another Direct Hit. An uh, Exploration for free. Another Direct Hit. This is not very well shuffled. Man. Flank Speed. We already did that. Uh, bases that give you free stuff. Trying to find War Machine again. Let's read it because we got two. When one of them is used production, add plus four to the production value. Oh, that's pretty good. Let's see. Uprising. Um, exhaust a planet somebody else has and get trade goods for its value. That's great. So you get paid to exhaust somebody's planet. Uh, no. I'm trying to look for something. Oh, here's an agenda one too. Uh, after insider information, after agenda is revealed, look at the top card of the agenda deck. This basically means you always have to do two. Uh, you can see the next one. That could be quite great. Um, and if you notice these little chits here on the top right, that means it's a codex card. Uh, in person games, you might not have those printed out. I want to print them out for my personal set. I may or may not do that though. Um, emergency repairs is cool. Remember, so same damage that two hit thing. This lets you reheal all the hits you took. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So there's a lot of combat cards too. Upgrade. Oh, you can make your ship better. So replace a cruiser with a dreadnought. Pretty good. Oh god, this one's the worst card in the game. But it's another agenda one. When you are elect, when you are elected as the outcome of an agenda, choose one player. That player is elected instead. So you can move somebody. Say you're getting killed. Uh, lucky shot. You can destroy a dreadnought cruiser. I had this last game. Actually, I never could use it. Uh, destroy a dreadnought cruiser or destroyer in a system that complains a planet you control. Why is it hard to use? They have to be in the space above your planet with no fleet there. So basically, they failed an invasion, or they're just in space. And you can just shoot them from like it says a missile here. The missile and an insignificant spark against the darkness struck the whole of the dreadnought. Moments later, the starboard flank erupted in flames. So basically, you're shooting non-PDS and hoping to hit something. Uh, oh, this is one of the best cards. Rise of the Messiah. In action. Place one infantry from your reinforcements on each planet. In infantry are really hard to get, even though they're cheap. Uh, and that's a great card. Let's see if there's any other. Oh, reactor meltdown. You blow up somebody's space dock. Boo! It's a good one. Um, uh, I'm trying to find another agenda. Skill to retreat again. Spy. This one lets you steal action cards. Randomly from another player. Horrible. Um, I'm trying to look for agendas. No, refit. Oh, here we go. Diplomatic pressure. When an agenda is revealed, choose another player. That player must give you one promise. Oh, we did that one. Dang it. I'm trying to wait for a... There's not that many agenda ones. I'm, fine. I'm trying to find a writer. Hold on. I'm just going to search now. The last category that's very important are called writers. Let's get the writers out. And then will this video be over? I'll show you these. These are a big deal. Um, but if you've never seen them and they ha and you have them in your hand, they don't make any freaking sense. They're super powerful, and I'll explain them in a second. There we go. Okay, we got the riders. Okay, bye everybody else. Let's pick you up, shuffle you, drop you. Okay. How about I won't search? Ah, there we go. Okay, so let's look at these. What are riders? They basically are gambles where you don't vote in the agenda phase. And if the outcome you gamble is going to get picked, gets picked, you get the benefits. Let me show you. After an agenda is revealed, you cannot vote on this agenda. Predict allowed an outcome. If your prediction is correct, draw three action cards and gain the speaker token. Remember how good these cards are? Imagine getting three for free and you're the speaker. Pretty good. 
Um, Imperial write-up. This is the best, by the way. You cannot vote. Predict allowed. If you're right, you get a victory point. My gosh. Great. Um, construction writer. If you predict right, you get a space dock. Nice. Uh, leadership writer. Uh, you predict right, you get three command tokens. Again, quite good. Trade writer. Predict it. Get five trade goods. Warfare writer. Um, you predict. This one's a little funky. Uh, you predict allowed. You get a dreadnought. Okay, free ship, four points, that's not bad. Diplomacy Rider. Um, this, you can prevent somebody from attacking your system, like Diplomacy, before the round starts. So you can make a system free from attack. Pretty good. Uh, come on, let me have... Why not? Please? I think there's two in here, though. Nope. And the last one, Technology Writer. This one's great, too. You cannot vote on this agenda. Predict allow the outcome. If you predict right, you get one tech. We'll talk about how you use these later um, when we talk about agendas in another video. But it's good to know these exist. If you have one, I always recommend trying to use it. There's, And we'll talk about how you use it later. But they're very nice to either get free stuff or force people to vote for a thing you want. So, for example, if you Imperial Writer on an outcome that'll hurt you, People will almost never pick it. <laughs> so it's a great hedge. Now, there is one faction where you can guarantee get all of these, and you should not use them. I'll show you. That one faction is extra, and we'll talk about them much more in the agenda phase. Everything they do is agenda phase, all their special abilities. But their hero is super cool. Uh, look at this. Uh, their action. You may discard one law from play, which is our agendas. Look at the top five cards of the agenda deck. Choose two, and resolve each as if you cast one vote for the outcome of your choice. Discard the rest. Other players cannot resolve actions during this. And this goes along with their commander, by the way, which is Game of X cannot prevent you from voting. That means you can play writers and vote. Which means X-Jaw can, if they have a couple writers, play two laws whenever their hero is unlocked, and they can play writers without anybody else stopping them. So like an Imperial Rider x -jaw is super powered. So there's the exception. If you're x -jaw, save your Riders for when your hero comes out. Uh, pretty good. All right, so that's the end of my action phase, uh, agenda phase, I mean, video. The This was not exhaustive. What I mean is, here we go. Does it shuffle? I'll shuffle. Uh, the point of this video is just to get you familiar with the kind of broad categorizations. I would say generally, I made a couple notes here, just kind of the broad meta. Um, when you get them and how you use them really matters. And that you just have to play the game for. Um, and some groups, like I've made some notes here, I'd call terrorist groups who play this game. Like they threaten you with an action card and try to get you to pay. For example, direct hit. Remember, these are secret. You might not actually have it. You might be bluffing. So, hey, if you don't pay me one trade good, I'll direct hit your ship in, say, somebody else's combat, which you're allowed to do, by the way. Um, the game group I've played with, both of them so far, they're pretty anti-terrorist. What I mean is if you if you threaten it and want to get paid, most people say, screw you. <laughs> so that might not work for you, um, but it can be interesting. Um, and generally speaking, if you're going to ask me, Jeff, are they worth to get? Like, should I get this technology neural motivator so I draw two? Or should I play the secondary of politics, which is two free cards? Um, my answer would be, depends on how well you understand them or in your personality. If you're feeling kind of aggressive and you want a lot of secret moves in your hand, again, up to seven, uh, it may be worth, uh, it's definitely worth it. But if you're, if you're kind of a straightforward person and you just want to fight the map fight, Maybe not. Like, just keep the ones you get in one a turn. Use them if you got them. Don't worry if you don't get them. That'd be kind of my advice. Oh, and the last one. I should never skip this one. Because it didn't come up. Sabotage! There's four of these, too. Sabotage is great. Let me show you this one before we go. <laughs> when another player plays an action card other than Sabotage, cancel that action card. So there's a four in... 120 chance that when you play one of these cool action cards somebody's just going to sabotage it and nothing happened <laughs> it's great i shouldn't laugh so much I'm trying to shuffle hold on <laughs> but yeah, i shouldn't laugh so much but it is quite hilarious oh come on pick up the whole stack shuffle <laughs> 
Yeah, there we go. So, Sabotage can cancel your day with action cards, which is great. And again, again, if you're in kind of a terrorist meta, that's what I call it, nobody else calls it. And somebody's like, I'm gonna sabotage your fucking research, pay me two trade gods. Uh, you can just say no. <laughs> like, no, I'm gonna take it as a per I think my group, most people, at least half the people say, like, no, uh, I'm gonna take that as a personal feud. I will now fight you the rest of the game, right? Like, so it depends on kind of the character and the personality of the people you play with how well that works out for you. But hopefully this was a helpful video, everybody. It's right about 25 minutes. I'm going to end it here. Uh, keep your eye open for the next one. It's going to be promissory notes. And then after that, we'll do agenda phase. So I, I've got a couple of these lined up. Playing two games in person really motivated me to make more. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.